with Teresa Ronsig, President of Springerly Joy. In this next video, I'm going to show you how to use your Springerly molds to make cookies and crafts. We just finished in our first video showing you how to make the dough. I've been letting it rest for about 10 minutes, covering it with a damp towel so that the dough doesn't dry out on the surface. I've got three molds to demonstrate three techniques. I've got a heart mold with lotus flowers. Isn't this gorgeous? All the detail and you will see every bit of it in the resulting cookie. I have a very deep pine cone and I'm going to show you how all of the details in this can be made in the dough without sticking. And the third one is what is called an Edelweiss flower. You might notice that it matches the one in my necklace. They are symbolic of the Bavarian and Swiss areas of Europe. In addition, we have a bowl scraper that will help us get the dough out of the bowl. We have a bench scraper, which is going to be useful for manipulating the dough and also for cutting the cookies and transporting them to the cookie sheet. We have a pastry brush and some all-purpose flour. The purpose is to uh, be able to put some flour on the mold itself and on the surface of the dough to prevent sticking. And then for irregularly shaped molds, I have two sizes of ravioli cutters. These in particular are from Italy. The Italians know a couple things about making ravioli, and I found them to be the best of the four or five different brands that I have tried. And of course, they're available on my website. And let's see, what else do we need? Well, we're going to put these off to the side for the moment, and we're going to focus on our dough. Probably the biggest issue that people bump up against when they start to make Springerly cookies is how to get the dough so that it's not too dry, but it's not sticky either. Because sticky means that the molds are going to get stuck. So what I recommend is that you take only about a quarter of the dough out at a time. And that enables you to get practice, of course, at adjusting the, the stickiness. But more importantly, you're not working that dough. You're not drying it out. You're not making it tough if it's not actually close to being molded into a cookie. I start by taking some all-purpose flour and being very generous on the countertop. Then I'm going to take about a eh, third or a quarter of this bowl and lay it on there. Cover the bowl up again with a damp towel and we're going to start adjusting the moisture. You see it's sticky right now. But we know that we have gotten the maximum out of reducing stickiness by letting that dough rest for 10 minutes. Still sticky. Oh my, I'm working with my fingertips because this is like dough. We're going to get this to a consistency that's about right. I think it's about right. I'll give you one tip. Don't use your deepest mold on the first rolling. Then just coat the rolling pin with a little bit of your flour and roll it out. I'd like to start with the shallowest mold, which is a little Edelweiss. Make sure that you've dusted the surface of your dough as well as the cookie mold. Then you're going to press in and just enough so that you get the entire mold into the dough. You're not pressing all the way down to the counter. Then lift up your mold a little bit and see how it worked. Well, this one worked out pretty well. And I'm now able to take a cookie cutter and cut out that image. I'm going to use a very small one here, like so. And we're going to peel back that dough and remove that cookie to the cookie sheet, which, by the way, I've already set up over here with a piece of parchment paper. Parchment paper is absolutely wonderful for any kind of baking that I do. It saves all that cleanup. Oh, I, I, I can't tell you. 
I'm going to re-roll this dough and make it a little thicker this time because the next cookie mold that I'm going to use is a pretty deep one. That's the pine cone. Here I'm going to coat both surfaces again with the flour and knock off a little bit of the extra. Then again, I'm only going to press as far down as I need to and then release the mold a little bit, but keep the mold against the dough at least on one side. The purpose of that is that if you didn't get a good impression of the steep mold, you can always go right back down and press some more, and you won't have a blurry image. Luckily, I have a perfect impression. Now, for this kind of a mold, you can, you can finish the edges in two ways. You can use this sharp-edged bench scraper, or you could use one of the ravioli cutters. In this case, I'm going to show you how to use the bench scraper, and it's pretty, it's pretty darn easy. Cut, 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 and now you have a mold. Now, I had to adjust this a little bit because I grooved it in. You can, you can adjust it very nicely just with a light movement of your fingers. The last mold that I'm going to show you in the last technique is an irregularly shaped mold. This is a gorgeous heart, great for a wedding or Valentine's Day, or even a tea just for the heck of it. Press this one in, and again, hold at least a side of it to make sure that your image comes out cleanly. It did, so I can release it. Now, I don't have a heart-shaped cookie cutter. I don't have an oval-shaped cookie cutter, but I have what I need, the ravioli cutter. And I'm going to follow the edge of the heart as far as I can, and I'm going to let the cookie cutter run off the edge of the dough. Same technique here. You don't have to cut out the entire heart in one fell swoop. Cut in like that, lift off, and then try to get in there tightly and go off. Now I've purposely not done a, a real sharp clean cut because I want to show you that you can always go back later and clean it up some more. I highly recommend the small diameter when you're working in a tight space like the uh, groove in a heart. This wider one is great for bigger molds in general. Then using the bench scraper, you can put this on your cookie sheet. Another uh, tip I'm going to give you right now, don't worry about that flour. Don't try to brush it off. It can bake that way, and then after you're all done with the baking process, the cookies are cooled, you can go in with your pastry brush. But if you did that now, you would distort the image a little bit, and you don't want to do that. Let them dry for 8 to 12 hours. The purpose of the drying is to form a crust on the top of the cookie so that when it goes into the oven, the only way it can move is up. You won't get a spread like a chocolate chip cookie. And that's what we need because we, we want to keep this image intact completely as it bakes. So I'll be back with you after I finish rolling out the rest of the cookies.